Yes, Blues fans, we're back with another podcast. This is episode 10 with Steve Trainer. How you doing, Steve? I'm right, cheers, Jamie. How are you, mate? I'm all right, thanks, mate. It's good to get you back on again, Steve. It's nice to be back. It's just been a bit of a mad couple of days, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a, what a mad few weeks, mate. It's just been, uh, been crazy, isn't it, for Blues? Yeah, I think it's been coming, you know... Uh... It, it, it was just building and building and building. I think it got to the stage really where I just don't think it was uh, it was possible to carry on with Wayne Rooney because the toxicity had become so much. I think you could also see there were issues on the pitch with the players. You know, it, it just didn't seem. Uh, I don't know, like it's a hard thing to explain. It didn't seem cohesive. Like everyone didn't seem together. It, uh, it looks as if. They didn't sort of know what they were doing. Do you know what I mean? It's a yeah, hard, yeah. It's hard thing to explain, but it just didn't look organised to me. That's the best way I can say it. Mm. Do you think that they couldn't grasp the style, or do you think they just didn't want to play for him? Because obviously, like, I mean, you hear rumours and things like that. I mean, I mean, I was on board with him, like, and obviously he was as well. Because I mean, um, for the people <laughs> that are watching this, Steve, it'd be good to tell them about, like, obviously what you do as well. Uh, you're in charge of the projects and stuff on Facebook as well, aren't you? A lot of people that haven't found yeah, well, the group yet. Started, I mean, you know, it all sort of ties in, really. We started uh, our Facebook group, which is called BCFC The Project, on the 13th of July, which was the takeover date. And we actually called the group for the first week, I think, the 13th of July. And we only changed it when the final, uh, when the final signatures were done and everything. And then we called yeah. it The Project, which is what the club call it. And uh, 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 and since then we've added our YouTube channel, which is uh, BCFC the project. Steve and Beck, if anyone wants to have a look, we, we tend to just uh, we we don't go on that much, but just keep them fairly short and just try and keep people up to date with what we do on the Facebook page. And we link the two things, you know, yeah. it's like the, it, it, it's just uh, a spoken version of what we do on the on the group, which is quite good for some people. But I think that, that just going back to your original question, uh, I think the whole thing probably started, to be honest, you know, if you look at it, looking back with hindsight, it was the dismissal of John Eustace, you know. And I think straight away, there were two things there. Like, it wasn't so much the dismissal. It was also the appointment. I don't think yeah. anyone would have wanted Wayne Rooney as a manager. Or, you know, I, I don't know anyone that would have chosen him. You know, yeah. so if you said to 20 people, okay, John Eustace is going, who do you want? I don't think one of them would have said Wayne Rooney, you know. So, yeah. and it come on the, and, Wayne, and John Eustace's dismissal obviously come on the back of two really good wins against Huddersfield and Albion, you know, scored seven goals in two games, although we'd had a disastrous spell before that. And I yeah. remember fans calling for Eustace's head, you know. So, yeah, man. <laughs> but, but the two things together, uh, uh, dismissing John Eustace in the way it was done and then appointing an unpopular manager straight away we started off on the back foot you know the fans didn't want Wayne Rooney and a lot of fans didn't want John Eustace to go I mean Beck that I was that I, you know you know Beck that works with me yeah yeah I mean she was quite crying when John Eustace was sacked I mean that's how that's how emotive it was and mm. I think ever since then uh, and I think if you look at that and then magnify it into the dressing room. So let's say we've seen what happened with the split in the fans. I'm guessing the same sort of thing happened in the dressing room, you know. They've seen John yeah, you reckon? And they've seen Wayne Rooney come in and they're all thinking, what the fuck, you know? You know, what's John Eustace done wrong? Uh, and, and, and they had a close bond with John Eustace. Something yeah, John yeah. was good at was man management. He was very, very good with them, you know. Uh, and, I, and I think that's where the issue started. And I don't think John Sanderson's been happy from day one, you know. I think as time went on, John Ruddy was getting pissed off. He couldn't really play that passing game on the ground. It's not his sort of game, you know, from a goalkeeping point of view. Um, it's just been a difficult ride for us, really. And I don't think once or twice we've performed well. Ipswich, you know, they played well. They played well for 20 minutes against Plymouth, you know. But he hasn't been good. It hasn't been nice to watch. It hasn't been nice to see the way the fan base has turned on itself. Yeah. You, you know, it's been a really sort of emotional time. And I think uh, Knighthead 
Prob might have left it just a little bit later than I would have, but uh, you, you know, I, I, I think it shows us though something about Knighthead is they're fairly ruthless. So when yeah. they decide something is going to change, it changes. Yeah, and you can tell that this wasn't it wasn't planned. They just decided it, and I've got a funny feeling, if I'm honest, that Gary Cook might have let it go on for a bit. But I think they've had a nod from. Uh, 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 from upstairs from from tom wagner and he said listen he's got to go now and he's gone and the reason i say that is because we've got no one lined up to come in you, you know yeah. if this was planned like john eustace was they would have had someone lined up to come in virtually straight away it's obvious that that hasn't happened you know they haven't well did you think of his statement steve now the statement that he released because it was interesting that you just said there that like you wouldn't have let it go that far well, um, his statement, he was saying that like, he wasn't given long enough to get the team to how he wanted to get them. The, the point with that is, it's all right saying that, you know, from his point of view, that he's talking as a manager, uh, he, you know, managing Birmingham City. But what he's got to remember is that this involves the fans as well. And yeah. fans aren't going to sit around while we win two games in 15. It's not going to happen. We live in the real world, you know. Everyone wants to have a bit more time, but it doesn't happen. And the way football yeah. is now, it's completely changed. 20 years ago, we might have got a bit more time. It doesn't happen like that anymore. I mean, I, I was surprised to find out that, you know, like I think Gary Rowett, who's just been sacked by Millwall, was the longest serving manager in the championship. He'd been with them for three and a half years or something, you know, something like that. Yeah. But, but, you know, these aren't long terms anymore. Managers very rarely see the contracts out. And that's why there's so many clauses in contracts now that make it possible not to pay a manager fully. You know, if you sack him yeah. after a short amount of time, or, or there's often performance um, clauses in the contracts that, you know, if the manager doesn't reach that performance criteria, then the full payment doesn't have to be made, you know. So contracts are really compl complicated now because managers don't last that long. Yeah. What did uh, I mean? Um, so obviously, he's gone there, but like obviously, the build up to Wayne Rooney coming because like it wasn't like a very well kept secret, was it? Like we all knew something was going on, it was just a matter of a case of when he was coming basically because it was going on for a few weeks, wasn't it? But I mean, um, obviously, they said that like he had a three was it a three year contract, was it or something? So, yeah, I mean, how does that work yeah. now, like in terms of like, um, what, in what terms of the money and stuff? Going back to what we were just saying before about um, uh, about them not having, not knowing that Rooney was going, they've just done it fast. If you remember when Rooney came in, there were quite a lot of leaked t uh, uh, news stories about Rooney, Rooney coming in. Yeah. And then it went away, and then it come back again, and then it come back again. And clubs often do this when they're going to bring someone in. They soften the blow for the supporters if you want they sort of get you ready for it and they also yeah. get the response you know so what makes me think that um this wasn't done in this way with wayne rooney sacking was that there is no that there has been no easy way into it they haven't slowly led us into it that he's just gone and we haven't got anyone straight away coming in you know uh and the second part of that was what was it jamie Oh, uh, because he had like a three-year deal, like, and obviously they've obviously done some sort of clause to try him. He's, a, he, he's got a three and a half year deal, and, and I'm, I don't pretend to know what's happened because I don't. But if he has got like a performance clause in it, which he could well have, then if a certain and, and it depends because he hasn't been there that long, yeah, uh, it might have like a 15 game after 15 games if you haven't done this after 30 games if you haven't achieved that after you know uh, i don't know because i don't know the 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 ins and outs of his contract but it may well be that that contract has been negotiated down in some way um, yeah I've seen stories about him saying he doesn't want his payment i mean I, you know i don't know where that came from uh if i was what i don't know he may have done i'd be surprised but um, if he has, it's a fantastic gesture. But I mean, why should he? You know, I mean, uh, I don't mean he's done a great job or anything. But I mean, we gave him the contract. A contract yeah. has to be honoured, you know. So I don't know. They may have uh, done some kind of arrangement with him. Also, the other thing they can do is to keep him 
uh, on the books, you know, they can keep paying him just as if he was still working for us. Yeah. What's your views on like uh, John O'Shea and Carlos? Because obviously, like, there was things going around about like that there was being abusive or something, wasn't they, at the ground? I mean, I didn't see anything when I was there, but um, <clears throat> I would. Uh, I've heard that they were abusive, but I don't really believe everything that I read on social media. I mean, I, you yeah. know, there's so much information out there that you have to filter it a little bit. I think yeah. what might have gone on is they might have had a few things shouted at them from the crowd. And they probably responded in some way, you, you, you know, like you, you've heard it with Rooney, fuck off, fatty, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But if someone's standing 10 feet away from you and shouting that sort of abuse at you, I think you've got every right to come back, you, you know. And I don't yeah. know what, what, uh, and when it, when it was, uh, that point was made on, on our group, and we don't just accept any shit on the group, you know that. Uh, yeah. So what I said is, if anyone's got any proof of this, you know, like any video, anything like that, give it us, and we can ask the club about it because you know, um, members of club staff shouldn't be abusing fans. No. But it works both ways. Fans shouldn't be abusing club staff. You, you know, so it, it, it works both ways. But but no one, you know, no one came with any evidence or anything. So I don't know. Uh, they might have just had a couple of crosswords with someone and then you know what it's like you <laughs> blown up out of all proportion, you know. Do you think they'll stay, Steve? Now Rooney's gone. Do you think they'll stay and uh, carry on at the club or do you think that they'll go? I doubt it very much because that very rarely happens. Um, I don't know what the contracts are like and I don't know what the arrangement is now. <clears throat> um, I would think probably Mike Tyler will stay. Yeah. Um, uh, if Tony Mowbray comes in, which I think he is, then he'll probably bring in uh, Mark Venus with him, who's been with him for virtually every job he's had, and they work together. They work well together as a pair, and I can't see that letting them letting encroach, uh, letting the influence of Ashley Cole and John O'Shea encroach on that, unless they keep them on, pay them, and just give them some sort of minor role. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the intricacies of it enough, you know, but I don't think it's good to keep part of a previous coaching team if you've just got rid of the head of it, you know. And then yeah. you have to think about what the interaction with the players will be like then for Cole and O'Shea. Will, they have less, yeah. will the players have less, less respect for them, you know? Will they sort of be laughing at them behind the back, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, it, it would be yeah, sort yeah. of, uh, uh, you know, like your boss has gone sort of thing. Yeah. I don't I would hope that wouldn't be that... Uh, I would hope they'll be more professional than that, but people are people, you know. <laughs> and like in terms of the season, Steve, at the minute, oh, because you stand obviously not in a very good place, are we? Um, and obviously teams below us now are picking up points uh, gradually. I mean, so what's your views in terms of like, I know we've got like an inkling that it might be Tony Mowbray, but I mean, what's your views like whoever comes in, if it is definitely him or if it's somebody else out the other view that was uh, mentioned? Do you think we'll be okay? Or I, I, I mean, out of everyone else, I don't know who I would choose. I mean, I don't. Steve Cooper's not coming. I think that's obvious. You know, uh, it won't be Potter. So you, they can you can put those out of the window. So out of the candidates that's left, there isn't really one that I would think would be strong enough to unite the fans. That's the thing. It's not even yeah. thinking are they good enough, but will enough of the fans accept them? And I think uh, at this point, Tony Mowbray would be a good appointment, not just because he's a good manager and he's got a good record. He's got a very high percentage win pre uh, record. Yeah. I think he's like in the low 40s. <clears throat> um, he's also got a lot of experience in the championship. He's gained promotions with Middlesbrough, you know, I, I, I'm not sure, Blackburn, I think. But, but he's, 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 um, he didn't... He did well at Sunderland as well, didn't he? You know, and and everyone at the Albion loves him. If you speak to any yeah. Albion fans, in fact, I don't you, you don't see many fans that have got a bad word to say about him. To be honest, um, so so I think he would be good. His style of football is good. He plays a fairly uh, a, a nice um, brand of football. He likes to attack. Uh, so you're going to see like you know four three three something like that. He don't play the pressing game. Uh, I think they press from the front. That's what Sunderland did. But but he's a good he's a he's a and he's a good man manager and what I like about him 
But this is how I feel at the moment. Is you know what I said to you before about when Wayne Rooney was there, you feel like it's not organised, it's not together. You, you yeah. know, there's arguments. There's, that ain't going to happen with Tony Mowbray. Because Tony Mowbray will put his brand on the club and that will be it. There'll be no arguing, there'll be no falling out. What he says goes, that's it. And Tony Mowbray as well, he's not in a position where he's going to be taken the piss out of because if he doesn't like it, he's been in the game long enough. He, he, he'll just walk, you know. I mean, he, he, he's, a, he's a bloke with principles as well. Yeah. So I think that works well. And I think it's a good fit with United, actually. I've heard a few mm -hmm. people, you know, some that uh, I, I listen to a lot, you know, and I listen to their, uh, you know, to their opinions and, and value them, have said that, you know, they'd be disappointed if, if it's Tony Mowbray. But, you know, uh, I, I beg to differ there because I think he's going to he's gonna bring the fans together. Yeah. I think the players will... Uh, uh, will appreciate what he is. Uh, they'll respect him. Uh, the man's been in the game for an awful long time. He knows how players work inside out. Uh, uh, and he'll take control of the whole club, really, you know. And I, and I think that's what that's what we need at the moment. We need a steady head. We need someone who's cool. We need someone who plays nice football. And we need yeah. someone that doesn't panic. Doesn't make stupid comments to the press. If you listen yeah. to a Tony Mowbray... Um, press conference they're, they're really really good you know the bloke talks sense he's a human being he's he, you know he, he interacts well and he loves rebels yeah you know what rebels are don't you yeah Would you... yeah 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 he, he loves them <laughs> so you want to get in his good books buy him a bag of rebels <laughs> he made that blog stuff as well yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. on his lap I used to steal them off him Moves kids, but yeah, um, but I mean, like out the others as well, Steve. Obviously, there was like talks of uh, John Eustace coming back, um, Gary Rowett as well. I mean, what was your views on that? I was too like uh, hearing that and stuff. I don't think was John Eustace would have worked because a lot of people wanted him gone anyway. Yeah, so if we would have come back, we'd have had that same split in the fan base, you know. Everyone, you, you know, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> upset and a bit of sort of uproar when Eustace was sacked and whether you uh, whether you liked him or not uh, it, it wasn't done in a particularly nice way I don't think you know I think it was quite you know it was oh. ruthless, and I felt sorry for him you know the way it was done mm -hmm. um, but I don't think he was the answer I, I think we would have been not much better off than we are now you know to be honest and, uh, and you were just asking me about where I see us being this season. You know, well, I think that our position in the league at the moment, uh, and I'm not like looking at this through rose-tinted glasses. I'm just looking at possibilities. We're 12 points beyond the playoffs. So if you look at it that way, you know, if we win two games under Tony Mowbray and get it all moving, we're moving up the table. We're not looking over our shoulders, you know, and that's yeah. what... That's what I think. And I think with John Eustace, we would have been probably uh, in, in not too dissimilar a position than we're in now, probably a little bit better, but probably not. And yeah. I think Gary Rowe, he's always going to get you at the top end of the championship. You know, he plays a defensive style of football. It's not attractive to watch. He's not... He is an attack minded. I mean, the bloke was a fullback. I don't know if you've ever seen him play. I mean, he's a great fullback. I loved him at the Blues, you know. You know, but uh, but as a manager, and he's a nice bloke, you know. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I wouldn't have. It wouldn't have been my choice. I wouldn't have been heartbroken if he'd come. Yeah. But I would have yeah. Tony Mowbray ten times more than Gary Rowett. What about what about the likes of Neil Warnock? Because he was mentioned as well. Uh, well, it wouldn't have been it, it wouldn't have been like that that bad an appointment, I don't think. But uh, I, I looked at the I don't think Neil Warnock was ever going to come. But I look at you look at the others, and you have got like Paul Heckingbottom, who's had a bit of check bit of a checkered sort of career. You, you know, yeah. he's done well here, and he hasn't done well there. You know, uh, mm. there were others mentioned. I mean, Potter's always mentioned. It's not going to happen because he's still on, under contract to Chelsea. Uh, who else was mentioned? I can't remember. Quite a few. The thing with that bet, the thing with that betting market, though, Jamie, was that it's a small market. So people yeah. were saying that, oh, you know, like Cooper's three to one on Cooper's four to one on. Well, it, because the market's such a small market, that Birmingham City manager's job, 
if you put 20 quid on Steve Cooper, it changes the odds. Yeah. You know, you, you seen in there, didn't you? Uh, um, it, it was a, a, a Dwight York. You seen Dwight York in there at 12 to 1 or something. That's just a Villa fan putting, taking the piss and putting a fiver on Dwight York and it gets him in. You, you know, it's such a small market. It doesn't take a lot of money to change the odds. So yeah. when people went three, four to one on, you're looking at it and people think, oh my God, it's a, it's a, it's a done job like, you know. But then give it a couple of days uh, and the market settles down a bit. But even then, a few bob on someone. Uh, and, and, the, and what happens then is it's like now, this is why you sort of loathe to say it's definitely Tony Mowbray because of the betting. It's because when Mowbray starts to go odds on, then other people add money to him, you know, uh, and then yeah. it makes it, it reinforces the price. But I do think it's done. I heard from a couple of people yesterday, and oddly, I was in the supermarket, and uh, I, I just I got two uh, WhatsApp messages within about two or three minutes of each other, more or less saying that Tony Mowbray is a done deal, you know. But that was yesterday morning, so a lot's gone on since then. So I don't know. Uh, it's just what I've been told, and they're people that I trust, you know. Yeah, I'm going to say because you're uh, quite um, up knowledgeable as well. And you seem to be in the know as well, don't you, Steve? So I mean, uh, if it's coming from you, mate, then it's got to be uh, it's got to be up there. No, I mean I'm not in the know. You know, I don't. It is. I, I'm not. You know, I mean the thing is, it's like with any manager coming in or or anything like that. It's never done yeah. until it's done. There's things that can change at the last minute. You know, always. Uh, uh, and when you, you know, like when you run a group like ours, you get loads of people telling you stuff different, and, but you get to know some people that are a lot more reliable than others, you know. And when you yeah. get some of people that usually tell you things that are correct, then you tend to sort of go with it. But there's still times now, you know, when really, I, I, it happened the other day and I was I was stitched up beautifully, really. I wasn't stitched up, but I was just an idiot. Because I've seen a couple of posts coming through telling me that, uh, um, Mick McCarthy was coming in. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I looked, I just quickly looked at two Twitter accounts. One was, I forget who, um, uh, there's two Twitter accounts anyway, and I should have rot checked them out, but I just run, I just quickly run it in the group. So I sort of just heard from a couple of people that yeah. Mick McCarthy, well, yeah, there were two, well, oh, the two, I can't remember the Twitter accounts, were, but I didn't go in and double check the Twitter accounts, and they were just mocked up accounts for two people who had got Twitter accounts, but it wasn't them, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> <clears throat> so that's what you get for not checking resources, but usually we check and, uh, and try and make sure. Now, uh, um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I did uh, manage to find the uh, managers that were on the um, on the odds, and it was Neil Warnock, Gary Rowett, Alex Neal, Tony Mowbray, uh, Nathan Jones, Paul Heckingbottom, Lee Carsley as well. Uh, well, John Lee Lee Lee. Right, you know, because he's a Blues fan and he's got the England connection. I don't think he's probably well enough. Uh, he hasn't got enough experience at the moment. I don't think he is a club manager. You mm. know, he does well with the England setup, and of course, he has Ashley Cole working with him there. So you could yeah. sort of see a link with that one. Um, Nathan Jones, no, thank you. You know, he's he's a bit of a he's a bit of a fruit loop. You know, <clears throat> he wouldn't be for me. He, the guy is not. 100% there, I don't think like, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard him before, but, uh, Alex um, Neal, nah. Yeah, Jesse Marsh, uh, Will Still and Steve Cooper. See, Jess, Jesse Marsh, you could see, because of the American connection. Yeah. But I don't think they would have dared to put him in, because everyone would have said what I've just said, it's the American connection. They'll want him in because he's a Yank. Yeah. And yeah, he wasn't that impressive at Leeds. <clears throat> he's got a very good win percentage. I think he's had two, I forget which team he was with, uh, but he's got like in Austria and uh, Germany, he's got good win percentage records. He was the American, he was managing the American national team, which is going to give him a good win percentage because they play crap teams in that particular, uh, I, forget, I forget which group, uh, which world group it is. But you yeah. know, when they play for the World Cup qualifiers, they play teams that you know anyone can beat. Uh, so his win percentage is going to be pretty high anyway. Really, uh, Will still don't really know enough about him, you know. But um, when when you looked at, if I looked at that group, which I did, and chose one person, it would have been Steve Cooper. Yeah, 
I think it would second choice would have been Tony. He would have, yeah. Then it would have been Tony Mowbray, yeah. yeah because uh, and and now with the likelihood of Tony Mowbray coming in, you see, and I think a two and a half year, year contract, it, it tells you something. Like they gave mm. Rooney three and a half years, and I think they've looked at this and thought Tony Mowbray, okay, give him two and a half years. That might get us then, perhaps into the Premiership. And then yeah. when we're in the Premiership, Tony Mowbray's contract runs out. We could perhaps put someone in that's younger that that we that we have had time to look at. And if Tony Mowbray's done a fantastic job and everyone loves him to bits, we can move him upstairs. You know, if he wants. But the blokes yeah. getting up as well. You know, I mean, he might not want that pressure. But yeah. I think he's a really good. I think he's a really good choice for us right now. He's the ideal fit because See, he's, he's going to calm everyone's nerves. Yeah, because there was a thing as well, Steve. Now, there was um, I had some interesting comments on on some of uh, videos I've done, and some people were saying that he'd be okay like till the end of the season. And then I was like asking, uh, do you think he'd be okay like going into the next season? So, I mean, how would you see if it to that? Do you think he's good enough to <coughs> do like till the end of this season and then to carry on for a little bit? Thing is, I look, I, it amuses me how people say that, you know. Well, just give him till the end of this season, and then we'll get someone else. Well, you know, I might think Tony might be some sort of fucking idiot, like you know. Well, I'll tell you what, just come in for us, Tony. Get us out of the shit for six months, and you can fuck off, like you know, if you don't mind. You, you know, come on. I mean, the, he, he's a professional. Uh, uh, he, he's a professional man. He's a good manager. And that's taking the piss out of someone, you know. And I don't think there's going to be many people that's going to do that job for six months, you know, unless it's Steve Spooner. You, yeah. you know, we could have let Steve Spooner go on until the end of the season. Would have saved us some money because we wouldn't have to get a new manager in uh, and all sorts of stuff like that, you know. But then would Steve Spooner be the one that you, you'd want in charge the rest of the season? Spoons has done an absolutely great job with the under-21s, but, yeah. you, you know... Uh, it, managing this group of players is a different thing altogether. So I think the man, the, the players need someone new who can come in and put their arm around them a little bit. Mm. Um, and I don't think saying to the end of the season is any good. Uh, you, you know, I think that two and a half year contract is a good enough deal for him because, yeah. I mean, what I think what they've probably said to him is, you know, we'll give you two and a half years, get us into Premier League. When the summer comes, you're going to get some money. You can, You know, you can spend... You can look at, you know, we'll identify the targets for you. You, you know, come with us. We're on a great journey. This would be a great way to end your career. You know, that's how I would sell it to them. And yeah. in all fairness, like, I think anyone that gets face to face with Tom Wagner, uh, they're going to sign, you know, they're going to come to us because he's such uh, a genuine and strong bloke. You know, whatever he says, yeah. you believe. Now, for me personally, Gary Cook isn't, you know, I don't believe a word that comes out of Gary Cook's mouth. And that sounds a bit horrible because I don't know the bloke. You know, I, I, we all know his history with Man City and the issues that he had there. But I, I, I don't have the same trust in Gary Cook that I have in Tom Wagner. But yeah. that's not that's not saying Gary Cook won't do a good job for us. But for me, uh, the bets are still off for the moment on, on, uh, on Gary Cook. We'll just see what happens. It doesn't matter what I think anyway. You know, I'm just like anyone else. But, uh, but I'm not convinced with him the way that I'm with Tom Wagner. Tom Wagner convinces me. And to yeah. have him at the head of our business is uh, is a real assurance, I think, for the club and for the supporters. And to see the way he's acted now over the last couple of weeks shows oh, yeah. that, that ruthless streak is there. And, and if yeah. anyone doesn't do what they're supposed to do, they're out the window. It doesn't matter. Because the way I look at it is, obviously, Tom Wagner knows that Wayne Rooney is big friends with Gary Cook and, yeah. and knows Tom Brady. I mean, the reason the reason that, uh, that that Rooney got the job was because he's big friends with Gary Cook. So there's no doubt about that. I mean, you know, Adidas... Uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, Nike were uh, Rooney's sponsors... You know, then Rooney goes to Derby and then Cook's involved with Derby and Derby has, and Derby has Rooney as its manager. And then, mm -hmm. you know, he goes to DC and, and Cook's involved and Cook's still at Nike. And he, they've had, they've had uh, connections for years and years. It's no coincidence that when Tom Wagner makes uh, Cook our CEO, 
that the manager they employ is Wayne Rooney because no one else would have chosen Wayne Rooney. You, you know, yeah. that was a Gary Cook choice, a Gary Cook decision. He made the decision. He sold it to Tom Wagner. Tom Wagner's an American. They don't know a lot about football. He's looked at Cook. He said, listen, this bloke was at Man City. You, you know, they've done the business. Uh, and look where Man City are now. He's the man. Uh, and if he says that Wayne Rooney is like the best thing for this club at the moment, then I'm going to go with it and we're going to get Wayne Rooney in. So when he's come to sack Wayne Rooney, because I don't, I think Cook would have gone on a bit longer because then what's going to happen then is Cook has got to think to himself, he's got to roll the dice out. Is he going to risk it and let it go a little bit longer? And if it yeah. goes too long, Wagner pulls the trigger on both of them and they both go. Or yeah. does Cook speak to Wagner and, you know, and then Tom steps in and says, listen, he's got to go. I know he's your mate, right? But he's gone on far, far enough. He's, he's got to go. And, it, and it's done and he's gone. And that shows you that Tom Wagner, because, you know, Rooney also has that connection with Tom Brady. So, you know, Tom Brady might be a bit pissed off with Rooney going, but Tom yeah. Wagner has been, ruthful, has been ruthless, he's decided, he's going and he's gone. That's it. And that's what I like about, that's what, sorry, Tom Wagner. That's what I like about Tom Wagner. You, you know, he's business first. He cares about the club. Yeah. He knows yeah. the position we're in. He's no fool. He can see how the, how the I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen our supporters as divided as, as they are now. I know, it breaks my heart, Steve. I don't like it. I mean, ask your dad, he'll tell you, you know. Yeah. No, it's not nice, is it? It's <coughs> not nice, is it? It's horrible, you know, and I mean, we have to deal yeah. with that on a daily basis with the with, with the group, you know. I mean, it, it, all the time we, we're firefighting because people are, you know, and I don't like all the, the nasty comments and, and, and I, I'm not into, you know, our group ain't going to have anyone getting, uh, getting personally abused, you know. Whatever you think of Wayne Rooney as a manager, it doesn't affect him as a person, so they're two completely different things, you know. So... Mm -hmm. It, we wouldn't have that, but uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't impressed by the job he did as a manager. You know, no. I mean, I know he's saying, "Well, you know, he should have had his own players," but he took the job. He knew what was, he knew what the position was. Yeah, you know, no one had, had his arm up his back to sign a contract. So, right, uh, one more question, Stephen. I'll let you uh, get on with the rest of your morning, mate. Um, obviously now that Rooney's gone and. Uh, Spooner's taking over. Obviously, we're playing Hall later. Do you think that he'll find his own style, or do you think he'll carry on with the now fear uh, football, or or uh, do you think he's going to play like the strongest team? And, uh, <coughs> and do you think there'll be a change in the players' uh, chemistry and morale, body language? Well, several, there's several uh, questions there. I think, like, firstly, don't expect any big changes from Steve Spooner because. I think by now he's probably knows that uh, the manager, the, the new manager's coming in. Yeah, so, uh, I've been led to believe that he's going to the game today, so that'll be interesting to see if he's there or not. Won't it? I mean, yeah. if he's at the game today, then we know it's done, don't we? You know, yeah. if, you see, if you see if you see Tony Mowbray sitting in the stand eating a bag of Rebels, he's on his way to the Blues. <laughs> um, but don't expect any big change from Steve Spooner. If I was him, I'd go with, I know a lot of people saying, I'll play the kids' spoons, you know, this is the chance. He's not going to do it, you know. I mean, the bloke's in for one game. Uh, it'd be nice for us to get through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. It gives, yeah. it gives us a little lift. Um, I think Steve Spooner knows the players well enough, uh, although he doesn't spend as much time with them now because the first team trains separately from everyone else where they used to all train together. So yeah. he probably doesn't see them as much as he used to. But having said that, he, he knows them. Uh, and I think that the players will be playing for their own, uh, for, their, uh, for, for, their, for themselves today. Because over the last couple of months, they took a kicking off everyone, you know. But we've all had to go at them for one reason or another. There's not many players that come out of it unscathed, probably Stansfield. Yeah. 
you, you know, what everyone else really has had a bit of stick at some point or another. And I think they're going to come out today and they, they're going to play for their own pride, you know. That's what I hope. And to yeah. show that, you, you know, that they're still good players, they can still do it. And if they're playing with that sort of commitment today, hopefully we're going to get a result, you know, or even, you know, bring them back to St Andrews. Yeah. Um, I hope we can get something out of the game. I don't expect too much change from Steve Spooner. People are saying, you know, bring Dixon in, bring this in, bring that in. Steve Spooner isn't the character that's going to come in and make a big change. It's not his character. He's a very relaxed, uh, well, uh, uh, like, he, he maintains the team in the under-21s. And I don't think he's going to be doing anything massively different for us. Yeah. I think we're going to get, I think Christian Bielik's back today, I think. So uh, we're going to see, I think he is, I think we're going to get a couple of little tweaks here and there. But yeah. I, it'll be interesting to see if Jordan James plays. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, um, what's your thoughts on that as well, Steve? Because there was uh, some really interesting comments as well up under one of my videos that they were saying some are for, uh, for to sell him and then there was uh, others telling him to like hold off because he's worth more than four or five million. I mean, what's your views on that, Steve? Uh, uh, it, it depends on how you look at it uh, individually because <clears throat> if, if we want to have some money to spend in January, then we've got, uh, we've got to have some income. Uh, there's not many places we're going to get any income because everyone's saying, you know, like, oh, get rid of the, the big earners, you know, get rid of Sonic, Etheridge, uh, Duke yeah. Vitt. We'll throw them all out in January. You can't throw them out, right? They've all got contracts. And their wages... Are still due to them until June. So if yeah. you get rid of, you say to Etheridge now, right, fuck off, Etheridge. Uh, fair enough, he goes. But we still got to pay his wages till June. So we might as well stay. Do you know what I mean? So to yeah. get any of their wages off the books, number one, you get a, you've got to have a team that comes in that wants them. Number two, the player has to want to go to the team. You can't tell someone to go somewhere. He might think to himself, which is what I would do, and I think anyone would in that situation, I've got six months left on my contract. I'm earning good money. And at the end of that six months, I'm a free agent. I can go anywhere I want. I don't yeah. have to have the club. And meanwhile, his agent, knowing he's got six months left, now he's looking around clubs saying, right, you know, in uh, June, how would you fancy having Neil Lethbridge? And, yeah. uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it's like, so what's his contract? No, he hasn't. His contract will be gone. He's a free agent. All you got to do is sort out personal terms and you can have him playing for you. They're not going to come in now and pay money for Neil Etheridge and wait six months and they get him for nothing. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's, it's not. So the players probably won't want to do that. So I don't see anyone coming in. So if we want players in, we've got to sell some We yeah. haven't got a lot of saleable assets, you know. We've got the likes of Hall, who is injured, so you know, uh, uh, Ch uh, Chang, who is injured until the end of the season, he's not, you know, he, he won't be playing till next year. So, who, who do you think we can sell? All right, then you could sell Buchanan, but what's the point in selling Buchanan? We could do, I mean, we only paid, I think, 500,000 for him, he's probably worth five million, you know, so that's yeah. a lovely profit on him, but then you got to get someone to come to replace him, him. yeah. yeah. So, so the simple way to do it for now will be to sell someone like Jordan James for, say, five million. And then if you think what we bought in in the summer, I think we made, I can't remember how many signings we made, 10 signings or something. The total of those signings was five million. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah he so was, yeah. if we got five million, theoretically, we could do the same again. <clears throat> and also, you've got to remember, we were no different. Our situation in the summer was no different than it is now. In fact, it was worse. So the five million that we got in, where did that money come from? Mm. The sale of Chong and Bellingham. Chong and Bellingham, their joint transfer income bought all of those players in the summer. So we didn't spend any money in the summer. Any, yeah. So they can do the same now. Just means you've got to sell someone. You've got to sell someone. Yeah. So so it depends how you look at it, you know. If you're happy with the playing staff we've got at the moment, hang on to Jordan James. Uh, you know, probably get more for him in the summer if you want to sell him. But if we want some income now, 
and we want to get a new manager or, or although the I think players will be identified already by the recruitment team um, but if you want someone in then you know we've got to sell someone income equals uh, what we can spend score for later Steve come on hit me with it I don't know I, I, I'm going to go for a draw I think I don't know what score, but I think we, I think we can get a draw. I think what's happened over the last few months is we look very, very fragile. So mm. <clears throat> even when we start well, as soon as we score, we go to pieces. Yeah. So I think it'll be nice today, and in a lot of ways, it'd be really good if uh, Mowbray's there, because if the players know he's there. You know, I think they will want to oh, play for him. Yeah, you know, I would think so. And I, I would think Tony Mowbray lives in York, Yorkshire somewhere, because he's a Yorkshireman. So Hall's not far for him to go anyway. <clears throat> so it'd be good if he was there uh, and they can show him. But also, like, you know, now they haven't got Wayne Rooney, who's going to be criticising them after the game. Yeah. Uh, or, or, you, you know, so they haven't got to worry about that. Not that I think, you know, I have no view on that. I mean, that's his managerial style. That's up to him. But they're not going to have that to worry about. I hope they come out today. I hope they fight for the badge and hope they fight for themselves uh, and to show everyone that they're not the play, they're not the, the bad team that people seem to think they are because yeah. we know they can produce football when they want to, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's just getting that right style, isn't it? I can obviously the right, um, the right chemistry, like an attitude, really. isn't it? They've never really looked comfortable playing out from the back. Uh, and it's mainly the back four, you know. I don't think Sanderson's happy with it. And I don't think Sanderson has been happy since Eustace left, to be honest. I think yeah. they were very close. And I think the way he was treated and then Rooney coming in, I think that put his back up straight away. And I know people are going to say, well, he should be more professional. But you know what? There's still people. They have, they have their own thoughts and opinions and feelings. Uh, Avu, I think it's been really tough for him because... He hasn't really had a chance to settle in properly. He's played mm. right back, you know, he's played centre half, he's played, I'm not sure if he's played left back or so, you know, but he's been all over the place. He's been teamed up with Sanderson, you know, he's come on for long <clears throat> at the start of the season. Um, so I think we can see, we can expect better things from him. The mm. two, four, the four backs have had a tough time because they've been injured, you know. Buchanan uh, has been injured and, and Laird. Been an absolutely great signing. You know, he's been brilliant. Nathan Laird, you know, what a great player, but he's a little bit injury prone. Let's hope yeah. we get him back. Then we get him back to strength. And I think looking at uh, uh, Roberts, Tyler Roberts, a couple of people were like slating him last week. He was only. Oh, he's bred to him when he came on. Yeah, he's yeah. only on for like 10 minutes, pub. So Roberts is shit, you know. I mean, it's a typical. I was, I was impressed with him, mate. I was. He's got a nice touch. I said him yeah. when he came over here and played in Spain, you know. He played really well against Cartagena and he scored a lovely left-footed goal. Uh, the guy's got a nice touch. He's got a good footballing brain. Uh, we just hope he avoids He looks him. strong he's as well, good. doesn't he? He's a biggish lad. And it's like the thing with everyone slating Burke, you know, why is Burke playing? Our, our, our forwards, like, are small. We're a small team. The reason that Burke gets picked, especially when Bielik is out as well, we've only got about three players in the team that are six foot or, or over, if you discount yeah. rugby. So it's a really small team. So, you, you know, you can't... Those long balls then, uh, if if Burke isn't playing, there's no one to challenge for them and everyone will go, yeah, but he doesn't win them anyway, but it doesn't matter because he occupies a defender. You, you know, and the other thing when Burke plays is that defences can't play too high up because a ball over the top, say what you want about Burke, he's like shit off a shovel, you know. He's so fast that defences can't press up too high because if that ball goes over the top, Burke's got you on toast. And if you notice yeah. when he plays, they always defend a little bit deeper. So players don't always have to be that involved in the game to have, uh, to have some uh, impression on the outcome of it. You know, uh, playing someone affects the way the opposition plays, irrespective of how well he plays. Yeah. 
it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting, mate. I'm I'm looking forward to watching the game, and I'm also uh, excited to see what's going to happen with the manager and also with the rest <laughs> of the season. But uh, anyway, well, I'll, be day, mate. To, I'll be looking forward to watching the game this afternoon. I'll see how, how Stevie Spooner sets them up. You know, I'm expecting yeah. like a, a, a four three three or or you know a four. Four three three probably, you know. We'll have Bulik and Sunic in the middle, I hope. Uh, just put that anchor in there. Just steady things down a little bit today and see where it goes. I'll be looking out to see if Neil War if um, not Neil War Tony, Tony Mowbray's there. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, uh, hopefully he is. Uh, if he isn't, it doesn't mean anything. You know, I think that, I don't think there'll be any announcement probably until Monday, uh, and we'll just see what happens. I think it's. The club's silence also, I think, tells us that something's happening now because all the stories are out there. There's been yeah. nothing to quell the stories, you, you, you know, and it's a little bit like it was in Rooney. Story, 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 story for about four or five days, then the announcement. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that'll happen the same. Exciting times, mate. Let's see what happens. But, Steve, mate, honestly, Thank you so much for doing this, mate. I'm sorry that I keep asking you. I just love doing them with you, mate. Not, you, Matt, Matt, honestly, you know, I don't mind coming on and doing it, but, you, you know, it's been... I was saying to you earlier before we came on, on uh, before we, we, we started recording, that, uh, you know, that that uh, project um, Facebook page uh, is like a full-time job at times, you know. <laughs> I mean, luckily for me, my job... Uh, I start I start work at like six a.m. because I'm in I'm in a gym, you know. So yeah. From six a.m. until twelve, one o'clock. That's my sort of working time. But when I'm in at six until about eight, I have a little bit of time. Yeah. It's fairly quiet, so that's when I can get on. That's when I put. I always put. If everyone checked as a look, there's always a post from me on that's about I don't know five o'clock your time. In the morning, which is six o'clock yeah. my time, because so I'm sitting there, I can post. And yeah, yeah. In the afternoon, when people come home from work, then when I'm home in the afternoon, then all the posts start coming in on on the project, and then so from when I'm home in the afternoon till nine or ten o'clock at night, you're on on the project. So it's like fucking non-stop, you know. And the moderators do a great job, and Beck does a great yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. You know? You know, but you know, it's just full time. So fitting it in sometimes is difficult. And obviously, I do my own podcasts. They're not that yeah. regular, and they're only short, and they're not so much. Uh, you, you know, mine tend to be more varied. You know, uh, it is just yeah. about you know. But you know, we, we have good success with stuff. You know, we we got a nice sort of success now with the disabled facilities. They're starting to change them, and and we we've been interacting with the club on that. We're going to do a big a big thing this year on men's mental health so that we we were going to launch that in early january but because of the situation with the club we could put that back a little bit now yeah because we don't want anything to interfere with it you know so probably be february so men's mental health is going to be a big thing for us this year uh, and we want to you know our, our, our group is more, nice. well it's more of a community than, than just mm -hmm. a football group you know so you, you know the score you, you're part yeah. of it yourself no, it's brilliant, mate. It's the best thing I've ever joined anyway. So, Thank up you. the blues, Steve. Come on, you blue boys. Keep right on, mate. <laughs> yeah, keep right on, mate. And cheers for this again, Steve. Honestly, mate. Thank you. Can't thank That's you right. enough. Thank you. Cheers, Legend, mate. mate. All the best, Steve. And so to you, mate.